Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Drivers of Reactions module. This is video number 10 and it's another one of our applications of Hess's Law, this time to the process of respiration. One of the things that we often talk about is that the processes of photosynthesis and respiration are chemical complements because when we write out the full equation for, for example, photosynthesis where we have carbon dioxide gas combining with water to form glucose, C6H12O6, uh, solid and oxygen. Uh, what we have is a series of chemicals which can be rewritten in exactly the opposite order uh, to give us respiration. Now, just like photosynthesis, respiration is a very complex series of steps and writing the two processes in these simplified or general ways is simplifying the processes, but it still gives us uh, an overall understanding of what's actually going on in each of these reactions. As you might expect from the process that we saw in the previous video when we were doing the calculation for photosynthesis, if we follow all of the steps exactly as we did for photosynthesis, but exactly reversed as we would expect to have them for respiration, then we would find that the value that we calculated would have exactly the same magnitude, 2,805 kilojoules, uh, but would have a negative sign rather than a positive sign. So the process of photosynthesis is an endothermic process because it requires the input of energy in order for that uh, process to occur. Respiration is an exo, an exothermic process as it releases energy um, in the form or in a, uh, an available form for the cell to uh, use to carry out other processes. So that makes it a little bit redundant for us to go through the same process again and look at how respiration can be calculated using Hess's law. But fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, there are other types of respiration. Anaerobic respiration, for example, is something that occurs for the production of, for example, lactic acid. Uh, when the uh, muscles of our bodies are a little oxygen starved uh, and also for things like fermenters, a process of fermentation uh, which leads to uh, ethanol as a product is also an example of anaerobic respiration uh, and they are not the same processes that we see for uh, respiration or the reverse of photosynthesis. So that means we can also apply Hess's law just as we did for photosynthesis to the process of fermentation. So to put a simple equation that we can investigate, C6H12O6, which is our glucose, uh, depending on which form we look at it in, it could be in solid form or it could be in aqueous form, uh, is going to form ethanol, C2H5OH, this too can be a liquid form or an aqueous form, depending on which form we're looking at. Uh, and also carbon dioxide is also a product. As with any process, you want to make sure that the equation is balanced. So ensure that it is before we go any further. And then we have our overall equation. So now we're in a position where we can actually start to look at exactly uh, what is going on in this particular process. So let's see if we can work through the steps. So let's look at the process of fermentation. Firstly, we have the formation of ethanol. In the formation of ethanol, we actually need two moles of ethanol. This is in the correct form. So what we're going to do with our delta H value is we're going to multiply this by two. So we can keep the equation as written, which keeps the sign the same, but we're just gonna multiply everything by two. So that means that we get equation four becoming four carbon solid plus six H2 gas plus O2 gas uh, forming two C2H5OH liquid and a delta F H of um, minus 555.4 kilojoules. 
In the second equation, you can notice um, the first equation is equation 4 because it's the only one that differs from our previous equations when we were looking at photosynthesis. Equation 2 is the same as one we previously used, although last time in photosynthesis we wanted 6 moles of carbon dioxide. This time we just want 2. So again, we're going to multiply uh, equation 2 by 2 and keep it um, in the order that it's written. So for equation 2, we're going to have 2 carbon plus 2O2 gas, and I'll bring this across here to 2CO2 gas. And the delta H value here, we're just going to double this one here, so it's going to be minus 787 kilojoules. Our final one is the form, enthalpy of formation of glucose. Now this is okay with one small problem, is that it is in the wrong uh, direction. So we actually need to reverse equation 3. And of course when we reverse equation 3 we're also going to have to reverse the sign. So for equation 3 we're going to have to write everything the other way around. Uh, C6H12O6 solid producing uh, 6C solid plus 6H2 gas, plus 3O2 gas, and the delta H value is this time plus 1271 kilojoules. Now we do what we did previously, was to go through and see how many of these things we can cancel out. So we've got four carbons and another two carbons and six carbons over here. So four and two is six, so we can cancel out the carbons. We've got six hydrogens here and six hydrogens there, so we can cancel them out. We've got two um, plus one is three oxygens there and three oxygens there, so we can cancel them out as well. And that's going to leave us with, on the left-hand side, our C6H12O6 solid. And then on the right-hand side, our 2C2H5OH liquid and 2CO2 gas and a delta H value which is going to this time be um, minus 555 plus minus 787 plus 1271 and this gives us a total value of negative 71.4 kilojoules. Notice the difference in size when we're looking at the value for uh, anaerobic respiration like fermentation compared to aerobic respiration. This is a significantly smaller value, much less energy is generated in the process of fermentation than is in the process of aerobic respiration. This is just one more application of Hess's law and allows us to do calculations for complex processes based on the enthalpy of formation of the different compounds that are present in those reactions. Have a go at a few more, maybe see if there's another example of an anaerobic respiration process that you can use in, in applying Hess's law. And thanks for watching.